Tech has approached the Court of Appeal in Abuja, praying it to vary the order it granted the candidates of the Labour Party, LP, and People's Democratic Party, PTP, to be allowed to inspect sensitive materials that were used for the presidential election. INEC in its legal process dated March 4 urged the appellate court, which will sit as the presidential election petition tribunal, to vary the order to enable it to reconfigure the bimodal voter accreditation system beavers it used for the presidential poll. It told the court that the configuration was necessary since the beavers would also be deployed for the next round of elections, starting with governorship and state assemblies elections built for Saturday, as well as other rescheduled elections. According to INEC, without a prompt variation of the inspection order granted to OB and ATIKO, especially the aspects restraining it from tampering with information information contained in the beavers, it would be difficult for it to proceed with the scheduled elections. And still talking politics, ahead of this Saturday's governorship and state houses of assembly elections, strategic commanders of the police formations have been charged to provide the needed leadership to ensure a peaceful atmosphere for the electorate and those on election duty. Inspector General of Police Usman Al-Kali Baba gave the directive at a meeting with strategic commanders at the force headquarters in Abuja. We use this forum to convey my sincere appreciation and commendation to you all seated here and indeed to be in there by the the police chief, Usman Al-Kali Baba, is impressed with the performance and conduct of his men at the last week's presidential and national assembly elections that wanted an improvement. We commit ourselves to national duty and sustain the high operational level that is attracting our broad commendation to the force. He has therefore decided to meet them again for another national assignment, which is this week's governorship and state assembly elections. Nothing less is expected from the men, as the police boss told strategic commanders. We want to provide the requisite strategic leadership in our battle force for our personnel in guaranteeing an electoral and general public space that will remain stable, peaceful, and still enough to keep citizens in no doubt of our military commitment to their yearning for the credible electoral process as we come up to the 2023 general elections in a few days' time. The IGP reminded the strategic commanders of the force to secure the operations within the rule of law and remain non-partisan, firm and supportive to INEC. Also admonish veterans and veterans to prepare for their children and wives to reduce the eyes of being recruited as cannot focus or the supply agents to destroy our electoral process. The Nigeria police will be Towards dousing the tension that emerged in the presidential and national assembly elections, IGP Al Kali Baba applauded the initiative of the leaders and some state commissioners of police and peace and ordered other commissioners to follow suit. The police boss assured Nigerians and the international community of the false commitment to protection of lives and property with strict adherence to the rules of engagement. Still on Saturday's election, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, has assured Nigerians that the Corps will work to secure voters, domestic observers, sensitive election materials, and electoral officers in a well-coordinated manner during the March 11 gubernatorial and state houses of assembly elections in the state. NSCDC State Commandant Idowo Ojelabi said this during the strategic interactive sessions with area commanders and divisional officers, which was held at the Ogu NSCDC Cooperative Building at Beokuta. The essence of training uh, is to scale down 
the training we have all received at national headquarters in preparation for the forthcoming elections. We want to put our officers on their toes to re enlighten them, to re energize them on the activities of the gubernatorial and House of Assembly elections to know the regulation bounding all the security agencies in Nigeria, especially in Ogun State, so that we all understand the rules and regulation. And we are going to be limited to what the laws says about our activities concerning the peaceful conduct of the election. NSDC Ogo State Commandant Idowo Ojelabi preparing his men for Saturday's election. Ogo State Governor Prince Dakbo Abiodun has restated his commitment towards the development of the socio-economic status of the state. Governor Abiodun gave the assurance on Sunday at a special prayer organized for his re-election by the state chapter of League of Imams in Affairs, led by the Chief Imam of Egbaland, Sheikh. Sadala Bangbola held at the Presidential Lodge at Bilkuta. Governor's Office Correspondent Yusuf Ghani reports. It is a special prayer for Governor Dabbo Abiodun by the League of Imams and Alphas to seek God's blessings and success of the gubernatorial and House of Assembly elections come 11th of March 2023. The President General, League of Imams and Alphas, Yoruba Land, Edo and Delta, Sheikh Abdul Jamil Kewilewe, among others, described Governor Dabbo Abiodun as a performer who is still in leadership has engendered more developmental projects into the states. So particularly me. Former Deputy Governor of the State, Elijah Salmat Badru, among other religious leaders, said the performance of the Governor in the last three years and eight months is second to none. We are very happy with uh, our present Governor, Prince Dakbab Abiyadu NFR. Uh, he has taken our issues uh, with great interest. Uh, as he does a lot for the other religious groups, so also he also do for the Hispanic groups. His first time in, in, in office is a blessing to the states, sincerely speaking. So we believe he can perform to that level within very short time, four, 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 four years. If he has the second chance, he will do better. That's why we are confident, we are optimistic, and we thank Allah, we want him to come and crown our efforts on him and give us time to celebrate and praise him together comes 11th of March. inshallah while appreciating the league of imams and alphas for the support particularly their prayers governor dakwa abiodo said over 120 million naira has been generated for the muslim sectoriat and multi-purpose all proposed by the state muslim community <laughs> On your Saturday, March 11, if we go to Pataki, we are going. We will go to the city. We are going to find that she lies three years and nine months. We will stay. If we are going to go to Moni, we will be going to Alabako. We will be going to Remo. We will be going to Jobu. We will be going to Yiwa. We will be going to Ibaku. We will be going to Bobo State. We will be going we will need to develop any part of this state at the expense of another one. But if you see the community book, we are going to share the mobile data job and also we will prioritize it. Madam, I pray and conquer. Calling on them to come out in large number on March 11 to support his candidacy, Mr. Governor noted that the support given to the ruling party during the.
of the weekend's governorship and House of Assembly elections, more groups have continued to drum support for the re-election of Prince Dapo Apiodo as the governor of Ogun State. DA Acolytes, a grassroots political group spread across the 20 local government areas of Ogun State, assured the governor of securing more votes for him during the election. Bumi Adigo, who covered the gathering in honor of the governor, reported that the convener is engineer Alexandra Mazuya. His report. Preparation towards the re election of Prince Dakwabiadu is gathering momentum as everyone wants to be on the moving train, which they see is doing well at a better speed with more goodies on board. They have seen the administration in its performance than any other administration since the state has been created and its re election is non negotiable. DA Acolytes is a political group with tentacles spread across the state and they are here to declare their unflinching support for Governor Dakwabiodun's re-election with the promise that they will deliver him by getting him more votes come March the 11th, 2023. It's a group that we set up to mobilize intellectuals to support the aspirations of His Excellency Prince Dr. Dakwabiodun for the second term and we are here today to thank our people for coming out in mass to vote for the president-elect. We thank them, we appreciate them. So this is a get-together to appreciate their effort. Engineer Alexandra Mazuya is a convener and used the medium to tell the people of Ogun State to vote for Prince Dakwabedu in Saturday's election. We are here to further sensitize our members on the need to continue with our grassroots and door-to-door -door, uh, you know, sensitization of our electorates. We know that we have done one, and our leader is now the president-elect of Nigeria. But we have another one to go, which is uh, in delivering our votes and those of uh, our communities to our able governor, Prince Dakwabi Odu come the 11th of March. It was an evening with members list with much fun and on the other hand sensitizing them on what they need to do before, during and after the elections. Bumi Adigun, OGTV News. A state to come in the news, deadly outbreak of stretch throat disease claims 61 lives in Kano. Details of these and more reports after this time out. Don't go away. Six, zero. The news continues. The Buruji Kashamo and Otumba Jumila wild groups of the People's Democratic Party PTP have endorsed the re-election bid of Auguste Governor Prince Dapo Abiodo. The endorsement was announced at an event which took place at Itoku in Abiyokuta South Local Government. The event attracted members of the People's Democratic Party PTP from across the 20 local government areas of the state. Governor's Office Correspondent Yusuf Ghania reports. Here at the late Buruji Kashamu and Otomba Jimila Wild Groups of the People's Democratic Party PDP from the three central district of the state to endorse Governor Dakwa Biodun for another term in office. The group, led by the state PDP legal advisor, Barista Ola Kukoi, and a chieftain of the party, Alaji Wasu Ajadi, said the endorsement was in appreciation of the performance of the governor in less than four years in office. <laughs> The state chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Chief Yemi Samusi, commended the DCMPs for their decision to join the party urging them to go back to their various worlds and local governments to be fully integrated into the party. Governor Abiyodun in his remark thanked the PDP members for the honor done him. Now, 
Describing the leaders of the PDP as reliable and men of integrity for a diminished faith to support his re-election, the governor assured all the decampaigns that they would not be treated as newcomers but would be given the necessary support like the old members. Yusuf Ganiyu, OGTV News. The Allied People's Movement candidate in the last National Assembly election for Ikokia, Yewa South Federal Constituency, Honorable Kola Wale Lawal, and his supporters have dumped the party for the All Progressives Congress, APC. Honorable Lawal said the achievement of the current administration, led by Governor Dakbo Abiodo, across all sectors, particularly in his constituents, is another motivating factor for him to join the party. He further stressed that the gubernatorial election was a done deal for him. Governor Dakbo appeared to appreciate Honorable Kola Wale Lawal and his members for the large turnout of the people and said that the determination to move to the Boom Party was a reflection that they were ready to join ends with his government in its giant stride of rebuilding the state. for the trust reposed in him, calling on them to impose it on their friends, family members and colleagues to vote in the Saturday gubernatorial and House Assembly elections on 11th of March 2023. The All Progressive Congress support groups across the three senatorial districts in Ogun State converged on Abeokuta, the state capital, on a solidarity work for Prince Zakmo Abiodun ahead of the forthcoming governorship and state House of Assembly elections. Elizabeth Esson reports. March 11 warming up exercise the called eight as all support groups in Ogun State under the flagship of the All Progressives Congress embarked on a solidarity work in support of Prince Dakwa Biodun's second term bid. Today's mega work is to show solidarity to our uh, dear governor. He has worked very hard for the progress of Ogun State. And we believe that it is of high essence for him to be returned back to the office because of the works he has done. And today, the purpose of the work is to canvass votes. He should go and be sleeping. The support groups in Ogun State will win for him. That's exactly what we have in mind. For landmark achievements across the state, under the administration of Prince Dakwa Abiodun, members of the groups confirmed 
that the work is an assurance for a massive vote for the governor and all APC candidates come March 11, 2023. March 11, Saudi, uh, is non negotiable. The is not only going to win, but going to win massively. Come March 11, with all sincerity, I have to tell you that we are willing and it's willing. Our governor is coming in for the second time. We never believe this work will be like this because it was just an impromptu that we agreed upon late yesterday to do. And we canvassed people, they came out tremendously beyond expectation. This shows Governor Prince Dapwabodu has won the election. The work, which began from a Gada roundabout through Shokuri, Iteko, Ibarra, Omida, Okelewo and Kuto was rounded off at the party secretariat in Okemoson, Abelkuta, Elizabeth Esson, OGTV News. Still on the re-election bid of Governor Dakbo Abiodo, the World Transport Employers Association of Nigeria has endorsed the re-election of Prince Dakbo Abiodo as the next governor of Ogo State come March 11, 2023. Addressing journalists and members of the union at its state secretariat, Titilayo Akibo mandated all its members to go out owners to return the governor for another term. Bumi Adigo covered the event and completes the report. Members of the Road Transport Employers Association of Nigeria, RTEAN, at their state secretariat in Abelkuta converged for an emergency meeting led by its chairman, Titilayo Akibu, popularly known as Ifili, as they unanimously endorsed the re-election of Prince Dakwabedu for another term. Titilayo Akibu, while unveiling the union's plans for another term in office, with a design for the governor, mandated all members to go all out come Saturday, the 11th of March, 2023, and ensure they deliver the mandate. So, uh, Minister of Transport. We want to appreciate our governor on the magic turn at the Adrokago Airport. Members were also enjoined to begin a house-to-house -house campaign till the day of the election, as they have no job at the moment than to re-elect Governor Biodu, who has done tremendously well in the state for another term. Rounding off the meeting, Secretary of the Union in Ogun State, Tiwalade Akimbade, appreciated the governor for the much work done as he assured him of another term through the help of God and much work from their members and the people of Ogun State. Prince Dapo Abiodu for continuity. Because of many things he has done in transport sector. For example, he has created Ministry of Transport, the first of its kind since 1976 that Ogun State has been created the strategic master plan for transport, the agrocargo airport, and the buses, the introduction of buses for commercial purposes. So that's the reason we are endorsing him. Bumi Adigun, OGTV News. Similarly, the Articulate Motorcycle Owners and Riders Association, Amuran, Ogusta Chapter, has assured Governor Dakmo Abiodo that his re-election for another term is non-negotiable as the union will mobilize its members across the states to vote for him. State Chairman of the Union, Nuruddin Aluwunle, while addressing members at the State Secretariat in Abel Kuta, mandated all members to begin campaign for the governor's re-election. Again, Bumi Adiko Kovra, the event and completes the reports. They are members of the Articulated Motorcycle Owners and Riders Association, Amran, Ogo State Chapter, and they are here in their numbers from across the state to declare their support for the re-election of Prince Dakwa Biodun come Saturday 11th, 2023, and with their permanent voters card and the mandate is therefore for members to go all out and ensure that the governor is re-elected. They appreciated the current administration for the giant strides across all sectors of the economy and the best is to allow him to continue and finish the work he began. Chairman of the Union Nogo State, after allowing other members to speak from the senatorial districts down to the world level, thereafter assured the governor that the union 
will deliver. We want to assure our governor of our support through votes from our members. In another development, the Tricycle Owners and Riders Association of Nigeria at its monthly meeting rose to endorse the governor of Ogun State, Prince Dapo Abiodo, for another term in office and promised to get over 100,000 of its members to vote for him. Chairman of the Union in Ogun State, Abdul Wase Agubiade, however, mandated all its members to deliver their polling units in the gubernatorial election on Saturday, March 11, 2023. The rest of the report is presented in this package. Members of the Tricycles Owners and Riders Association of Nigeria, Turan, at their monthly meeting in Abelkuta, led by its chairman, Abduwasi Agubiade, with their permanent voters card in display. The union therefore mandated its members across the 20 local governments of the state to go all out on the 11th of March 2023 to vote for Prince Dakwa Biodun. Directing the affairs of the meeting, the chairman tasked members to ensure victory for Governor Abiodu, just as they all endorsed the re-election of Prince Dapo Abiodun come Saturday. We can see that the road network in Ogu State has changed tremendously, significantly, and importantly, they are roads of economic benefit, most especially to we transport operators in Ogo State. And this is reason this is one of the reasons we are here today to give him this endorsement. There is no local government in the 20 local government that makes up this state that his excellency has not done a very viable road project. They also commended the governor for the infrastructure development in the transportation sector most especially the agro cargo airports and they all are sure that their votes will count for the governor Bumiadigun, OGTV News the senator elect for Ogo West senator Adiola has revealed that he would be joining the senate committee on agriculture in the next senate to enable him serve his constituency as he made a promise of 20 million naira grant for Ogun West Farmers Cooperative to be formed. Senator Adela, popularly known as Yai, made this revelation during his meeting with farmer, Farmers Group and youth in his constituency to have the request and strategize on how to ensure the re-election of Ogun State Governor Prince Dakmo Abiodo for second term. The Senator encouraged the youth to give more than double of the votes received by the party in the just concluded election to the governor. Matthew Shomi has the details. Having been given the mandate to represent the people of Ogun West, who are predominantly farmers, this meeting of Senator Solomon Adiola with farmers groups in the senatorial zone, led by the senior special assistant to the governor on agriculture, Dr. Angel Adela Jaquie, is strategic. It presented a unique opportunity for the senator elects to restate his commitment to quality representation and various initiatives that will change the fortune of farmers and the zone. The senior special assistant to the governor on agriculture, Dr. Adela Jaquie, while presenting a request of the farmers to the senator, said farmers constitute a major voting block and will continue to support APC across because of the belief in the party. He knows what his people want. He has made commitments to the farmers. He knows that his people are primarily farmers. And he has said that because of that, he wants to ensure that he's involved in agriculture. He drives policies for agriculture, brings opportunities for farmers in agriculture. We're happy about that. Other leaders of the farmers' groups urged Senator Yayi to prioritize the welfare of farmers. 
TPC have a lot of program for agriculture and the farmers believe in the program. God we are assisting to assist the farmers. That is why we were here. Senator Adiola then met with the leadership of youth groups in Ogun State being coordinated by National Youth Council where they requested for more employment opportunities, training and capacity development for youth in the zone. The senator elects encouraged them never to let the society down as the future rests on their shoulders and ask them to work for the re-election of Ogun State Governor Prince Dapo Abiyadu. I need to address and speak to about the March 11 election. We have had the opportunity of rubbing minds, of sharing ideas, and what and how or what we are looking forward to as a people. He expressed his delight with the level of organizations and orderliness by the youth groups. Matthew show me OGTV News. The leadership of the People's Democratic Party PGP and the supporters on Monday stormed the headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Abuja, demanding the cancellation of the 25th February presidential election. Led by its national chairman, Yoche Ayo, presidential candidate Atiku Abubaka, and the director general of his campaign and secretary state governor, Aminu Tamboa, the party also submitted a petition to the commission. They said the election was not credible. I make add on Wednesday declared the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Bola Tinubu, winner of the election. The commission's chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, who announced the result, said Tinubu polled the majority vote of 8,794,726, while Atiku secured 6 million. 984,520 votes. Peter B of the Labour Party, LP, came third with 6,101,533 votes. And Rabi Kwankwasu of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, got 1,496,687 votes. Altogether, 80 candidates contested the presidential election. The PDP and Labour Party LP had rejected the results of the election during the collision of results and before Tinubu was announced as the winner. Both parties have also approached the court to challenge the electoral process and Tinubu's victory. They also faulted the Electoral Commission for not uploading the polling unit results on the INEC result viewing portal before the collision of results began. The parties insisted that it is part of the promises repeatedly made by the Commission and it, uh, it is backed by some section of the Electoral Act 2022. Presenting the petition to INEC's National Commissioner for Voter Education and Information, Festa Sokoye, on Monday, IU asked the Commission to cancel the election and conduct another one that will be respected by all. Okoye, who received the letter on behalf of the INEC chairman, said the commission will look into the issues raised and deal with them. We are sure that the electoral body will need to address the issues raised where they need to be addressed. We appreciated the peaceful conduct of the protesters. <laughs> Away from that now, the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Prince Clem Ikanadu Alba, has disclosed that the federal government injected a sum of 291.5 billion naira for the conduct of the 2023 population and housing census. Alba made this known at the high-level partners' engagement to galvanize support for the 2023 population and housing census held at the Transcorp Hilton Hotel Abuja. This amount, the minister said, was just 46% of the total money the National Population Commission would need to have a concrete exercise. He added that an additional and immediate sum of 327.2 billion naira is required to complete the census. Alba further disclosed that the census exercise was to be conducted last year but rescheduled for March this year. However, there is a recommendation that it should be held in May 2023. He said the last census in Nigeria was conducted 
in 2006. In 2024, the previous government proposed another census in 2016, in line with the UN recommendation for the senior census. Augusta Governor Prince Dapo Abiodo has presented official cards to the four principals general from the four divisions of the state. Details are in this package. In the presentation at the Governor's Office Car Park, Governor Abiodo, represented by the Head of Service, Dr. Nafiu Aigoro, congratulated the recipients and added that their dedication to duty and forthrightness in discharging their duties as principals general won them this kind gesture from the government. Governor Biodun urged them to see this as a call to more service in order to keep delivering optimally to the educational sector of the state. It will be the first set of principal general to be so given in our official vehicles and happen to be a serving head of service. And it's now my privilege to stand in for His Excellency to present this. The four of you, we've had interactions, and you know I've assured you. So I'm happy. I don't know whether I'm the one that should be happier than the test come chair, but all of us should be happy because this is something that maybe you were appointed with the other nine permanent secretaries. We've made efforts. God has just answered the prayer now. At his own On his part, Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Professor Abayo Miali Babu, appreciated the governor, adding that the gesture is another promise kept by his administration. Appreciating our governor for uh, putting smiles on your faces. I can see your faces. I can see all smiles. I'm surprised that. Um, Within a um, few, few hours of uh, announcement, everybody yeah. is here. Even you are. I So I'm really very happy and I want to congratulate ASUS and all uh, NUT, they're not here now, NUT and all uh, education stakeholders. We have all been clamoring for things that will elevate uh, the position of uh, uh, principal general and uh, educators. Also speaking, the Chairman, Teaching Service Commission, Evangelist Olale Kurifede, appreciated the Governor for making his word his bond by taking the teaching profession to another level in the state, as the four of them will be the first set to receive official cars. Also speaking, the President and Cops and his counterpart from the ASUS, Mr. Adeneye Adekoya and Dr. Felix Agbesogu, appreciated the Governor for making the teachers happy and pledged continued support towards the success of his administration. The spreading on behalf of the beneficiaries, the principal general for Jabu Division, Mrs. Olaiton Adeyemi, lauded the Governor for being wonderful and gracious to them by making the presentation a reality in their time. On behalf of my colleagues, we are very, very grateful to His Excellency, uh, Dr. Prince Dabadio de Nepal, for being so wonderful, so gracious, and for making this a dream come true. We've been on look for person, and we've been expecting it, and we thank God that today it has come to be, it has become a reality. The recipients are Mr. Wudumi Odukoya, Roma Division, Mrs. Olai Tuadeyemi, Ijabu Division, Mr. Sunde Olobi, Yuwa Division, and Mr. Olumiyi Shubulo from the Egba Division. Up next is Business News with Okoyemi Adeyemi. Stay with us. Welcome to the business segment of the news. Nigerian oil production output may fall this month over a fresh pipeline explosion. Findings shows that this is likely to occur due to fresh explosions said to have rocked a major export pipeline in the Niger Delta with about 12 deaths last Thursday at Rumwepe community in Emoha, local government area of River State. The explosions occurred at a major export pipeline, the 180,000 pyros per day, Trans Niger Pipeline TNP that passes through the Rumwepe community. TNP Pipeline's Nigerian major liquid hydrocarbon delivery channel was under force major from the better part of last year. 
Apart from transporting crude to the Boni Airport Terminal, the TNP is also part of the gas liquid evacuation infrastructure, which is critical for continued domestic power generation and liquefied gas export. Nigerian crude oil production has begun to recover, having increased by 100,000 barrels per day last month, according to data obtained from secondary sources survey. Nigeria is going to save about 10 trillion naira annually by the elimination of subsidies on premium motor spirits, popularly called petrol, and foreign exchange, a report released on Sunday by the Centre for the Promotion of Private Enterprises stated. It explained that the country would save about 7 trillion naira annually by halting subsidy on petrol, which, while well, an estimated 3 trillion naira, would be unlocked when the Central Bank of Nigeria eventually halts subsidy on foreign exchange. The director of CPPE, Muda Yusuf, would disclose this in the report titled Economic Agenda for Incoming Administration, explaining that the government that will, be, will take over in May should prioritize macroeconomic stability. According to a figure from the Central Bank of Nigeria, bank credits to the government rose by 11.75 trillion naira in one year. The CBN disclosed this in its money and credit statistics reports that the credit rose from 14.9 trillion naira as the end of January 2022 to 26.65 trillion naira the corresponding period of 2023. According to a report released by the CBN at the last Monetary Policy Committee meeting in January, a member of the committee T. Ali Usanusi said in a statement that the key drivers of the net domestic assets was net claims on government, which grew by 78.15% in December 2022. This in turn was driven by FGM's borrowing from Central Bank of Nigeria. The segment of the news. We now go back to Bukola for the rest of the bulletin. Stay with us.